Hello and welcome to another episode of my Working With Todoist series. My name is Carl Pauline and this week I'm going to share with you my top five favourite features in Todoist as of right now. I haven't done one of these videos for a long time so I thought now is a good time to do one. Now before we go any further I would just like to say if you do get any value from this video then please help me by clicking on that little like button down there. It really does help. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you want to get all the latest tips, tricks and news on using this marvellous app called Todoist, then please subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's get started with my favourite feature number one right now. Okay, let's get started with tip number one, and that is to make collecting as easy as you possibly can. This means you need to be using, or where possible, use the desktop version of Todoist rather than the web version. The main reason for that is that you can activate a keyboard shortcut in whatever place you are. So this is my real uh, Evernote account. If I just take you to my demo account, I color my demo account red. Let's just go into a random newspaper. So we'll just go down to the BBC and uh, oh, let's just pick the Guardian today. So I pick up on the Guardian. So now you can see I am in the web version of uh, I'm using Safari here, but you can see I'm using Safari. If I use the keyboard shortcut, Shift Command A, I get my dialog box right there. Now it doesn't matter where I am, I can go anywhere I like in any app. As soon as I hit that Shift Command A, that is what I get. I get this wonderful dialog box. Now I'm gonna go back to my Todoist uh, demo account here. But what I want to do really is to show you when you use the app version, you can set up your own keyboard shortcut. If you go into Todoist Preferences and you go down to Advanced, you get down here the keyboard shortcut. So I can show Hi Todoist for me, that is Control T and Quick Add Task, as I've just showed you there, for me is Shift command and A. Now I use a Mac so that's how we do it. I can cross this out, I can create new ones and you can create your own keyboard shortcuts straight from the advanced section of your settings. Now just a quick point, that is new. This is a new way that Evan, uh, Todoist are doing this. It used to be a slightly different way. So if you're using the latest version of the app then this is how you set up your keyboard shortcuts for quick add of task. Definitely something that you want to do. If you're using the web version, let's go back to the web version here. If you're using the web version, then you can, once you're in Todoist, you can type Q and the Q key on any device, whether it's Windows, Mac, uh, whatever uh, device you're using, you can add just quick tap Q when you're in Todoist and that will bring up the keyboard shortcut. Of course, when you're in your inbox, you've got the add task there too. Plus you've got the add button there as well. So you've got a lot of options, but make sure that you know how to quickly get tasks into your Todoist because that is going to save you a lot of time. Next up, tip number two is create a workflow for yourself. Now I've covered most of these tips in individual uh, videos, but I really wanted just to give you five quick tips that you can use straight away. What I mean by creating your own workflow is something along the lines of using the favorites section in Todoist. Now you can see right here, I've got my today's objectives, which are the two must do tasks that I want to do today. These are top of my list. These must be done. Now I don't actually work from this list. This is part of my morning routine is to review what my objectives are for today. I don't want to see a long list of tasks that I need to perform or complete today when I'm doing my morning routine. I want to start my morning routine knowing what my two must-do tasks are for the day. And that's right there, right at the top of my workflow. Next, this is where I spend most of my day working. Now remember, this is my demo account. Normally there's about 10 items in here. My two objectives, which are still there, they are in my workflow because remember, when I'm doing my morning routines, this is just to tell me what I am 
have set out to actually complete today. Now, if you're not using the 2 plus 8 prioritization system and you want to have like five tasks in here, these are your five must-do tasks for the day, that's okay. You can use that system. Remember, it's all about building a, a system that works for you. And workflows are just great ways of making sure you stay focused on what you've identified is important. So I've got my today's focus here. I've got my priority two, which is to do my exercise and my priority three to write this week's blog post. This is where I spend the vast majority of my day. Once these are complete, I will then shift over to today and you'll see that now I get my priority fours, which are my basically my routines. Most of these, as you can see here, down here are coming from my routines folder. But the workflow is just great. And then at the end of the day, when I do my, my final uh, 10 minutes at the end of the day, just to sort of plan tomorrow, I can go in here and see what are my focus tasks for tomorrow. These are the flag tasks, which actually leads me into my next tip, which is use the upcoming view, which is right here, the third one from the top in the left hand uh, sidebar for your daily planning. So here we are with today. If I click on Wednesday, which would be tomorrow, I can see what tasks I've got set up for tomorrow. Now, when I do this at the end of the day, as you can see here, like do 10 minutes meditation, this is going to be a daily task. So if I take that one off, let's say I've cleared my action this day, I've done my uh, this is what I've done today. So let's just check these off. What you'll see is they're now showing up in tomorrow because these are daily recurring tasks. They come from my routines. But this is just great way just to have a look, see, okay, these are the, I've got to enroll in a course, which the deadline is on the 30th of September. It sort of like gives me the, the impetus to say, right, these are the things I need to be aware of tomorrow. It could be that I have no invoices to check. Well, I can just check that off right away or I can just uh, re remove the date. But I, I'm not really uh, complete or move to project. What I usually do is just check it off. I'm not using uh, the, the karma points uh, seriously anyway. So if I don't need to do it today, I will check it off. I can also look ahead to Thursday and Friday to see what my week is looking like. By the way, I should point out in my real account, it's usually a, a lot more tasks than I have in here. This is just my demo account. Next up, which is tip number four, is create a routines folder to separate out all those little things that you just have to do, but you don't need to be thinking about on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, this is where I have my routines folder. Remember, I do the the time sector system. So I have a routines folder which is separate from my regular work here. Just to show you, I do have a recurring areas of focus. These tasks are recurring, but these are life changing. These are my core work. This is what I do. These are the things that are part of my areas of focus. These are truly important, which are very different from routines. Routines are just those things that you just have to do, but they don't move your life forward. And let's just say that today I'm feeling really tired. I'm just not in the mood to do any work and I just want to vegetate on the sofa and watch a movie. I can just ignore these ones here because nothing here is life changing. I can clean up my today's admin tomorrow. I can update the sales report tomorrow if I wish. I can update my client list tomorrow. I probably wouldn't skip meditation. Um, and to be fair, I could even just ignore my email today. These are not that important in my life. They just need doing things like washing the car, washing the dog, all that sort of thing are just things that need doing from time to time. But the beauty of having these separate is you don't have to review them. They're not going to get caught up in a review list. You've just set the recurrence to when it needs to recur and you can just leave it. Just ignore it. They'll just pop up when they need to come. And you'll notice here, apart from doing invoices, which obviously needs doing, I don't usually would, fl I don't normally flag routines. And so, because they're not that important, they just come up at the end of the day. And that's where I really like to see things. My final tip is, and it's kind of linked to the third one about using upcoming, is to use the flags to schedule, to to prioritize your day. Now, as you probably already realized, my red flags are my must-do tasks today. They must be done. But to-do is gives us three other flags, 
two really, but three other flags. And you can see them right here. Orange flag, which is P2, blue flag, which is P3, and then the white flag, which is considered P4, but really it's no flag at all. Now, the, you can pick and choose how you want to use these for yourself. My personal preference is my red flags are my must-do. My orange flags are the tasks that I want to perform in the morning. Now, it's not a hard and fast rule, but what it does is it actually gives my a structure to my today list. It also gives me a structure to my today's focus. As you can see here, these are what I need to start at. I mean, these might, I would probably write the podcast script first thing in the morning because that's when I usually do most of my writing. I would then say, ah, then I want to exercise. Then I'm going to continue working on the book. And then in the afternoon, I'm going to write this week's blog post. I use them this way. So when I'm looking at my today's focus, normally there's a lot more tasks than just here. So let's just go into my today and just show you what it would look like. We'll, we'll pick up some um, let's see, we haven't picked up many tasks here. <laughs> okay, let's just go down to the routines folder and I'll show you, we'll, we'll use some of these. So um, if I just, uh, we'll do this, uh, blah, blah, blah. We'll just select these and I'm going to change the date to these to today. So that's going to give me a lot more tasks in my list today. So let's just say that I, I need to book my car in service. I'm going to do that in the afternoon. Uh, I'm going to clean up today's admin. I'll do that in the afternoon. Update sales report. Let's say we'll do that in the morning. And I'm just flagging these. You can see how fast you can do this, by the way. Um, I'm just going to randomly do this. So you can just get an idea of what it would look like on a normal daily basis. And let's uh, do that one there. And we'll do this one as a blue flag. Right. So when I go back to my today's focus, you see I've got 11 tasks here now, which is more than what I would normally have. But so what I can do is I can look at these and I can, I can see that these are nicely organized in priority. So I can just keep it my view right here. So I'm saying, right, I've done my exercise. That's my morning task done. Let's go for lunch. Let's come back. And now I've got my afternoon task. And the same applies when you look at it in today. If I remove the custom sorting, in your today view, it will always organize by flag. So you've got the red flags up at the top, then your orange flags, and then your blue flags. And if you have any white flags, P4, they will come at the bottom. So it gives your list a little bit of structure to the day. So there you go. Those are my five tips, my top tips for 2021 on getting the most out of Todoist. The first thing is to make sure you're collecting everything. Get to know the different ways you can get tasks into Todoist. Remember, you've got keyboard shortcuts, you've got the Q, which works on everything. Just tap the Q and that will come in. And then you've got the plus up here as well, which you can get stuff in. And of course, you can just click on add a task there. So there's various ways to get tasks into to do it also have a look at your mobile phone whether you're using android or ios uh, iphone make sure that it's set up so that you can quickly collect tasks next tip was to get make sure you set up a workflow workflows are great because it gives you a flow and a system to your day and it also ensures that you stay focused on the things that are really important Next step was to create, third one is to create the routines folder because the routines, sorry, the next one was upcoming view. Use the upcoming view to plan your day. You just need to spend five or 10 minutes just reviewing that against your calendar so you know that you've not overscheduled yourself for the day. Number four was to create that routines folder. Get those routines out of your project folders. Get them somewhere separate so that you can just set them up and then leave them because they'll come up when you need them to come up. And the final one is to flag your tasks because flags are really, really useful. You've got the freedom to pick and choose how you use your flags. As I say, I prefer red flag to mean my must do, my orange flags are for my morning tasks and blue flags are for my afternoon tasks. Now, before anyone asks, I'm not going to give you any more tips, but before anyone asks, because I know every time I feature my filters, people ask me, what is that filter? So let's go into that. Today's objectives, the filter is, oops, today's objectives, the filter is, let's just go in there and show you, is today and P1. It's really simple. Just type in today and for sand and P1. That will give you anything that's got a red flag that's dated today. Today's focus is 
a little bit more complex, but not really. It's today and exclamation mark, not P4. That gives you every task that you have that's dated for today that it has a flag red, orange or blue. And that's that one. And then the final one, which is tomorrow's focus, which I use for planning really, is my is a little bit more complex. It's two days and P1. The reason why I use two days is because it's today and tomorrow. So if I've missed anything from today, it's going to show up in this list and not P4. I don't want to see my routine tasks or the less important tasks. So there you go. I've covered those because I always get asked, what were those filters? So there you go. Hopefully those five tips will give you some ideas for yourself to really get the most out of Todoist so that it's working and it's most effective for you. Thank you so much for watching this video and it just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Hello, thank you very much for watching my videos. Now I have something exciting to tell you about. Recently I have developed a brand new time management system. It's a system designed to manage your time in the 21st century. The world has changed a lot over the last 20 years. In fact, it's actually changed a lot this year. And what we need now is a system, a time management system that is very easy to use, easy to maintain, so that you can spend more of your time doing the work. And that's what the time sector system is all about. It's going to change your whole belief system about way the way a time management system should work because this focuses on when, when you are going to do the task. And let's be honest, it doesn't matter how motivated, inspired or how urgent something is. If you don't have time to do it, it is never going to get done. And that's what this system is built around, getting your work done. So you can spend more of your time doing the things that you want to do. I hope you join me in this course. The full details of the course are in the show notes below. So please join me and thank you very much for watching this brief video.